Hello, welcome to another episode of the Ice Cream for Everyone podcast. I'm your host, Willem Vanderhorst. If ever this is the first time you're checking out the show, I usually have conversations with a variety of thinkers, designers, creators. It's kind of like a wide field, but it usually revolves around my professional interest as a marketing and brand strategist or my personal interest in games and play. So I played a lot of and still play a lot of tabletop board games, role playing games, but I'm also interested in just game mechanics and how they apply to different areas and industries. Uh, that said, this is a special episode. I'm calling it the uh, season one finale. And uh, so well, because it's wrapping up something and it's a special one because I'm joined with my good friends, Lauren, Adam and James. Give us a hi. Hi. Hey. And hi. if you, sorry, if, if you haven't listened to it, uh, I started the very first episode of this podcast with Lauren, Adam and James. And I thought it'd be great to circle back with them. And it's almost a year later as we recorded that last conversation end of August. And now we're in uh, June, even though this is probably going to be published in July. Um, you don't absolutely need to listen to the first episode, but I'd still recommend it. I really recommend because you, you'll get a lot more of the background. You'll get a lot more of the whole conversation and where the show started. Uh, I recorded the very first episode with you guys. I had no idea what I was going to do with the podcast. I mean, I'm still making it up as I go, more or less, but there's a little bit more structure to it. Um, so you'll have more background if you listen to the first episode. Uh, you probably don't, don't absolutely need it, but I recommend it. And uh, for the rest of the conversation, I'm going to assume that you listened to the previous conversation, the first episode. So on to you guys. Um, thanks for being with me all along the journey from the very start. We recorded, as I said, the first conversation, the first episode together. And uh, yeah, so I guess let's start with what's been what's what's going on with you guys. What's been going on since then? And since the first episode, and I know this is funny because we just before we hit the record button, we we're like, <laughs> oh, well, we should have listened to the first episode again. And none of us have. <laughs> uh, do you, who remembers something from the last, the actual recording? I do remember a few things. I remember that Lauren was walking on the Heath a lot. Yes. There was a whole conversation <laughs> about Hampstead Heath and how Heathy and Heath like Hampstead Heath is in London. Are you still walking around the Hampstead Heath, Lauren? I am not so much these days. Not not as much. It's it, you know, I, I, as it's coming into summer, it's less heathy, so it's less attractive to me. It's less attractive <laughs> in the summer. What kind of park is less attractive in the summer? It's true. It doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> rarely do I make any sense. No. So, what do you got going on? Um, let, let's start with just a bit of an update. What's, what's been happening with you guys? Like, you know, anything that you want to talk about just generally to our listeners on any of the projects that you're up to these days? I, I really the, wish that I knew on, what we yeah. talked about last time because well, it's, re it's really hard to say what's different. Last time we last talked time. about last time. So we, I, we, we, talk, you, we talked about podcast listening habits. I remember that. Yeah, we're going to do that as well. Okay. Uh, we're going to do that. That's my next question. <laughs> we can start there if but you it's want. The, the main thing was you introduced yourself. You know, you talked you talked about what you did for a living. Uh, and I guess this is where I'm going with the question. So, like, Lauren and James, we have a weekly call and we talk regularly about updating each other on our creative projects. So, it may be writing, podcasting, uh, Lauren, your new business. Uh, so... So I guess that's the kind of updates I was looking for. And Adam, from your part, anything that changed before we get into, or we can straight get into like podcasts as you wish. Well, guys. No, I'm, when I introduced myself last time, I said I was a circus teacher yeah. um, and run Airborne Circus. And that's still the case. Yeah. Um, nothing much has changed there. Although some of our classes and our class schedules have changed, you know, we, had a as you know we had a bit of an issue with one of the venues that we were running in where they did some building works and we stopped being able to run our classes there unfortunately mm -hmm. um so things have changed a little bit with my work but essentially i'm still doing the same stuff yeah. work wise um i don't think that much has changed in my personal or work situation but there's certainly new interests and new things going on Cool. Yeah. How about the fact you want to change career? Yeah, that's probably one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, should I put it out there? Uh, <laughs> I'm, so although I'm still doing what I'm doing, I am also looking for um, what's next. Yeah. Um, I noticed. <clears throat> that's uh, very hero's journey. The, 
which is what the whole first podcast was about. Yes, actually, that was the title. We ended up talking, I ended up calling it the Hero's Journey to podcasting because we, we had this whole bit of the conversation about the Hero's Journey. It's a good job we're circling back to where we started. Exactly. That's the whole, you know, what's, you've got to go yeah. back to the village, transform, sort of change right. somehow. What's been your hero's journey over? <laughs> he, he's still, he's in it, isn't he? It's, right. it's, you, can, you can hear it in what you're saying. Yeah, it's shocking that you don't realise that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh So, yeah, one of the things that I noticed during this year is that I don't experience learning and growing and developing much as a teacher at this point Mm. um i've hit some kind of plateau where i'm great at doing what i do and i enjoy what i do but i also enjoy learning and growing and developing in myself and that's the bit that's missing for me at the moment Mm. so i've been looking at what what do i do next is it still circus do i develop that in some direction uh is it uh pushing forward to open up my own uh venue my own building my own circus school uh, or is it something totally different um is it something more along the lines of training coaching leadership which is another area that i have as part of my background um or is it something else entirely yeah um uh, event management is another one that keeps coming up. That's something that I used to do um, in the past, you know, uh, including when you and I were housemates, Willem. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's been a bit of an inquiry. I've been working my way through that, and I don't have an answer yet to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So it's it's an ongoing it's an ongoing inquiry, and it's an ongoing area that I'm looking at. Yeah. And you've been writing a few blog posts lately, and I thought I'd point it out because some of them are like, well, I mean, they're really good and very interesting for anybody who wants to, not only about circus, but you extend it out to leadership, training, skills, you know, how you learn different kinds of skills, which I I, I appreciate reading them. They're good. So I'll I'll link to them as well. Thank you. Um, Yeah, I I took a bit of a break from writing them. um, And recently I as I've been teaching, there have been things that have been cropping up recently. Um, we're in exam season now, as I'm sure James knows as a teacher. And one of the things that yeah. comes up every year is at the beginning of this term, the summer term, parents and students always say to me, oh, I might have to miss a whole bunch of classes this term. <laughs> I have exams. Yeah. And it's always struck me as a bit backwards, you know, uh, to try and cram in your studying the night before an exam as opposed to really using the benefits of circus for uh, improving your chances of getting good grades. So I wrote a whole thing about that recently. That was one of them. Um, Yeah, things just have been cropping up recently in conversation with people that have kind of prompted me to start writing again. So I appreciate that you're reading them, that you like them. Um, I've been enjoying writing them recently, actually. I'd quite like to do more. Cool. How about you, Lauren? Yeah, so things have kind of moved on for me quite a lot since <clears throat> we last spoke. So I think um, I'd probably started. I was, I was, I was in the midst of a career change. So I obviously, um, as I said, I used to be a lawyer and um, stopped um, stopped that and didn't really know what I wanted to do and ended up uh, enrolling in a um certified coach training course mm-hmm. so i think i'd probably just about started that last time we spoke so that's now completed i am now officially a certified professional coach yay. Um, yay. congratulations, congratulations. Um, thank you um and which is an interesting one in itself because a lot of people don't feel like a certification is necessary in that field mm. and what's the um, body that you trained with or the, the name because there's no well there's a few different ones with different kinds of reputations right or there are a lot of different coach training bodies around the world um Mm. and they're all actually certified by different um kind of uh, they're not called regulatory bodies because it's not officially regulated coaching but Mm. they're all certified by different kind of federations so i trained with the institute for professional excellence in coaching um which is mainly based in the States and they're accredited by the international coach federation. And they're kind of regarded as pretty much one of the top 
um, coach training bodies okay. in, in the world. Mm. Um, so, um, so anyway, I kind of, uh, part of uh, one of the big, one of the modules, um, on the course was, um, business development and marketing, which is one of the reasons why I actually chose the course. And it was very much focused on, you know, finding your niche, getting your message really kind of sleek, your elevator pitch. Mm. Um, coaching is a, is a tricky one to sell because it's not, um, tangible. There is a lot of misunderstanding out there as to what it really is. And there are also a lot of coaches out there, whether they're professionally trained or not. Um, because it's not a regulated industry, then people can literally overnight call themselves a coach, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like there are some mm. excellent coaches out there who aren't certified. Um, I mean, I personally enjoyed the structure. Um, yeah. and I, I'm pleased that I have a certification, especially as I'll go on to explaining, I'm working with, um, you know, larger institutions as well now, which I think they kind of, uh, it adds a certain level of credence. But, um, just going back to this business development, uh, marketing module, I, I, uh, I set out and really tried to niche myself down into a very specific group of potential clients who I would target. Um, and also read a whole load of blog posts and listened to a whole load of audios and videos. I mean, there are so many things out there, um, that you can sign up to about, you know, especially for coaches, <laughs> you know, five steps to five figure months mm -hmm. and all of this kind of stuff. And, um, so I kind of launched myself in with, Twitter, Facebook, website, blog, um, you know, started to, to build up some kind of brand. Um, I did, I chose not to call myself just Lauren Giblin. I chose to have a separate name, which was very much, I didn't particularly, I wasn't, I wasn't really bothered about the name of my business, but it was more aimed towards the, le the audience that I was trying to attract, which was the niche that I chose was kind of high flying professional women who, feel like there's something missing out of their life. Like they're doing really well, but there's just something missing. And I ended up with that because that was what a lot of my network, you know, that's what formed a lot of my network. Um, so I, so I went with that and I called my business bespoke coaching and I built the brand very much around a kind of exclusive, um, type of, you know, something that would appeal to these women. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but then I, you know, a, f a few months in, I found myself, not really, not with, with, with no clients in that field and not attracting any clients in that field. And it, it was very specifically women. I said, no, 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 I don't, I don't coach men. I coach high flying professional women. And all these men were turning up and saying, can you coach me? And I was like, no, no, sorry. I don't coach <laughs> men. <laughs> but after a while, the penny dropped and I kind of thought, hang on a sec. And I, all this, all this time I was really kind of scrambling to keep up with all the Facebook and the Twitter and the, the blog and everything. And, you know, one day I actually just decided to, to like strip it all back and, um, and say, look, get rid of the brand, get rid of the name, get rid of all of these, um, social media things. I'm going to go under the name of, you know, just my own name. Um, and I'll have a simple website and I'll coach you know, human beings like that's, that's my, my stand really in the world is not, um, Oh, let's just make a few people happier and feel a bit more fulfilled. Um, it is really, um, empowering each and every person in the world to, uh, wake up to and tap into their potential and use that to, uh, move the world in a positive direction. Cool. Um, and, um, ever since I've done that and I've like just let go of that, it felt like the stuff that I was being taught about having to niche and having to, you know, do all of these social media things. And, oh, by the way, you're not, there's no point in having a Twitter feed unless you're going to, you know, post 20 times a day or whatever. And I, you know, and I know you guys have something to say about that as well. Cause I know we, we sometimes talk about it on our, on our weekly calls, but, um, it feels so much more in line with who I am and what I want to create as a business. And since then it's just been, um, no, I haven't been spending time at all on, 
on the the peripheral stuff almost you could call it it's just having conversation after conversation after conversation with um with people and giving them an experience of coaching and if after a few times of if after a few conversations they want to sign up then great and you know it's kind of flowed the the flow is a lot easier it cool. seems so yeah so that's um so that's really what's been going on on, on the kind of one to one coaching side and I'll quickly mention the new business if, yeah. I, if we have time yeah. sure, sure, so sure. um so um back um towards the end of last year I was introduced to another um lady similar in age to me also a lawyer also a certified coach funnily enough having um having trained at the same um coach training school as me and had done a bunch of other personal development seminars at um landmark which um i have we all have as well Mm -hmm. um and um and had also suffered from a debilitating illness um in the same year in fact days apart from me Mm -hmm. uh so we uh we've come together really after a quite a successful conference on well-being for lawyers that she organized at the beginning of this year we came together to form a business called being lawyers mm-hmm. um and we are now running workshops and training sessions in law firms for both employees on how they can look after their well-being um and well-being really encompasses um mastering your mindset managing stress it's very much focused on the emotional um, mental and social side of well-being. We're not obviously focusing on physical well-being, um, given our, given our expertise and background. And, um, and we're going, at, so, so what employees can do to take responsibility for their own well-being and, and their own experience of being a lawyer, really, but also what's necessary from the, the top down, the management and the culture of the organization as a whole to really support that process and, uh, and facilitate it because, what we've what we've just found even over the last six months is the the well being of the legal profession is in a you know at an all time low really it's it's ninety six percent of solicitors suffer from stress and uh, it's only going to go get worse really um, given the highly competitive nature um, and one of the things that we really found from um, from our illnesses and recovering and really growing and stretching ourselves from from that was it was really in who we were being it's not about it's not about um, changing what we're doing, like, oh, so let's just get a bit more sleep or let's start meditating, all of which are, you know, obviously rec- highly recommended things, but not always um, particularly um, realistic when you're a lawyer, especially mm-hmm. like a transactional lawyer or a litigator or something when you're just coming up and up against deadline after deadline. So um, once we kind of shifted who we were being in life, and that's, you know, a whole other conversation, but um, we go into it in some of the video. So jumping around a bit, we're recording as well as the workshops that we deliver. We're recording short videos that we're posting on YouTube for lawyers, um, with kind of little tips that they can take on board, um, to manage their well-being. And, um, we obviously go into a bit more depth, um, in the videos. So, um, yeah, that, that kind of shift in who we were being in life and how we were, living essentially we call it like shifting to an inside out experience so Mm. we can really master our mindset such that the external circumstances aren't stress factors Um, we can deal with them in a more powerful and resilient way and that's what we're teaching um lawyers now and you know so far so good it's i mean people are really finding it groundbreaking and life-changing and loving it um so so yeah being lawyers awesome yeah and how about you, James? What's up with you? Thinking about listening to Adam and Lauren, thinking about Hero's journey, and just and just reflecting on. I, I, I was listening to Lauren, thinking, "Gosh, she's done loads," <laughs> and Adam's thinking about his career and stuff. I, I think the for me, it's been the the writing. I've done a lot more writing and explored that. Really, really enjoying teaching, and um, family my my immediate family my parents and my sister and also Davina and I having our own family and they all overlap mm. I can see how they all fit together with my writing I've I've written I had my first article published somewhere February 2015 I think it was on Good Men Project and then when did we start our calls 
Uh, no, we started our calls at the end of last year, I guess. Was it? Was it only no, six months more. ago? No, it was way more. Before, it was way before then. Way before it was then? when I started. When I initially started blogging, I suppose around March time. Then J, you, you, James, oh, and I. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, we uh, did start and way then before. Sorry. Dylan joined in about a month later. Yeah. So it's 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 really I I I think if I hadn't had that structure, I wouldn't have had the articles published that I've had. So since then, I've been I've had some written some added on my own blog, but also published. I think it's up to six now on Good Men Project. I've had three or four published on the campaign against living miserably, which is calm. Can you sum up both for anybody who doesn't know about those, the Good Men Project and campaign? I will, for- yeah. yeah. I'll do that. Thanks. So uh, the, the Good Men Project is the conversation that no one else is having. And it's a website all of really examining men, men's role in society, what men are dealing with on a very real level from perceptions of men in the media to dealing with how to create a relationship to dealing with divorce to being a father to improving your working life to dealing with how to improve your own body but it's a very different kind of expression of what it means to be a man it's very upfront and very honest and the articles are great and i've had yeah five or six published on the good men project the campaign against living miserably or calm is a uk charity that wants to this was well, seeking to end male suicide and suicide the biggest killer of men under 45 in the uk and i've got four friends whose dads committed suicide in my close circle of friends which was shocking enough when i really discovered about it but it I was quite surprised that it's not something that we talk about either as men or as in everyday conversation. Not that it's an everyday topic, but it's, it's, it's in the background that nobody articulates it. So the first article published on February 2015 and then having our calls has meant that I've pushed writing and I've had then articles, the featured author on Calm. One of my articles I had published on Calm was also published on Good Men Project. And then Huffington Post picked it up in May. And it was an article all about, and this is where it ties in with family and Davina and I having our own family. The article was all about our experiences with starting our own family and it not being the straightforward thing that you would expect. Um, and we had, we had two rounds of IVF in 2013. And I wrote about it from a man's point of view. There's loads of support for women. There's nothing for men. There's nothing. And it's, I think it's beginning to change. There's been a few articles about that. And, uh, that I've seen one recently in the Guardian, mm. um, by a guy called Gareth Farr. But it's, um, it's, it's something men don't really talk about. So I organized an event in January this year called Let It All Hang Out with, and this again ties in with the writing, Manoscopy, which is a blog that myself and some ex pupils started looking at men and masculinities. Mm. So the guy who started it, he's a, his name's Rohan. He's a, I taught him in year 11 or 10 or something like that when he was at school, maybe even younger. And, um, he did, he did a degree in English literature or something like that. And he's interested in, perceptions of masculinity and writing and what's out there and then he changed it to masculinities to really explore there's lots of different versions of what it means to be a man and what masculinity is so this event that i put together in january was with manoscopy and was all about male fertility we were having conversations about we were i was having conversations about sports women women in the media erectile dysfunction and sperm counts all mixed together just in a very open and whilst you know having a drink and it was it was really cool oh and a bit there was stuff in we're also talking about depression martial arts and chocolate okay (laughs) it was was that kind of 
it was so cool to have that kind of conversation with a bunch of a bunch of guys and a few women as well. Yeah, it's a nice Very, combination of topics. Yes, I, I love that. Of chocolate <laughs> and erectile dysfunction. And erectile dysfunction. <laughs> One yeah. can lead to the other. I'm not sure which exactly, but well, it could, it could. Well, you, um, yeah. and then spending a lot of time with my immediate family. So I go see my parents every week, mm-hmm. and still doing it every week. And my sisters moved back from Somerset to Epsom, so we're all really close, and all it's really nice to be be able to see her really often. She's bought a place with her her boyfriend, and adding to our house. We've got a, a loft conversion in our house that's changed our whole living space. And going back to the hero's journey thing, I think that the strengths really got into using Gallup's Strength Finder. And I listened to your podcast villain with Jim Collinson. Mm-hmm. It was listening to loads of material from Gallup and really engaging with it and thinking about it and consciously using the Strength Finder stuff at school in my job and with Davina and with my sister Lindsay and just that has been it's a really simple but such a powerful framework mm. and it was I thought your interview was brilliant with them cool, thank it was you. just it was really kind of cool to have someone I know personally talking to this guy just like super into Gallup and really senior and all that I, I thought it was great mm. So, yeah, that's that's what I, what's happened since the cool. last year. Fantastic. Uh, well, from and from my perspective, and specifically about the podcast, so thank you very much for all of you. This is really cool. Um, mine is like I remember our conversation. The first conversation that we had was really jumping into. Okay, I want to do a show. I really don't know what I'm going to do. I'm calling my friends. Let's have a conversation and go from there. <laughs> As I said, yeah. like at the beginning of that one, like I have no music. I have no intro. I don't even know what this podcast is about. And then I moved on from there and I was, I talked about it a little bit in the first episode. I had this first idea of, oh, uh, I need to do this to promote my consultancy, uh, business. And like, so I want it to be, a, I want it to, I want it to be interesting to people who work in marketing and specifically, you know, marketing and brand managers who work for brands who could be my clients. And I thought, oh, it'd be really interesting if we got insights and ran like, had conversations for the podcast that were like focus groups of mark doing market research with different people. So I had this started working on this idea and, uh, and then quickly realized it was both extremely impractical, a gigantic logistical logistics challenge to get like, because the ambition was to get three or four people that would be different people every, you know, whatever the, the, the frequency every two weeks or whatever. Uh, and have a topic and uh, about different. So like, for example, get three people in to talk about how do they buy cars? What do they think about cars? And what do they think about this or that? And then having three or four different people the week after to talk about toothpaste or like whatever. So like finding the people, finding people that would be like, you know, representing random consumers, but also be really interesting. Uh, finding an interesting way to talk about how do you buy a car or whatever other topic for ever so long. I tried to record a couple. I realized it was like just super complicated to organize the schedules of like different people at different times to be able to publish it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I like, and then I was like racking my brains for like, all right, what, what should this show be? What this is, what should it be? And then looking for the nth time to a lot of the same advice that you read from, you know, people a la Tim Ferriss or other kind of like, you know, people who have a public persona uh, or other types of uh, other types of blog posts, which is, you know, start with an audience of one, start with what do you want to listen to? And I was like, all right, what do I want to listen to? And, and of course it took me months to come to like the very simple answer, which was, I really enjoy learning and having conversations with people about topics that I'm interested in. And, uh, and I often reach out to people either in my industry in planning and strategy, marketing strategists or, uh, or game design, because that's something I'm really interested in as well. And I reach out to people and I have, and I ask them for coffee or ask to meet both to extend my professional network. But a lot of times it's just because they're really fascinating people. And a lot of times people are really interested in, a lot of people are open to having coffee, but they're busy. So if there's no other reason than just catch up for having coffee, uh, it doesn't yeah. really go to the top of the list yeah. uh, necessarily. And I thought, well, actually, 
after listening to several interview-based podcasts, one, as an amateur and as a starting person, having those kinds of conversations and interviews are quite simple to, they're simpler to put in place. It's one-on-one, so you only need to coordinate one per, well, two people schedule, mine and the other person. Uh, it's really interesting, and I really, really enjoy having those kinds of conversations. So I thought, well, actually, that's 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 all it is. So no, instead of reaching out and asking for coffee, I'm reaching out and saying, hey, do you want to be on my podcast? And just just we're going to, go, we're going to be promoting and publishing uh, this as a conversation. So that's what's been it's happening. So, it's yeah. so interesting because um, the we we spoke about a lot of that stuff. What should your podcast be in the yeah. first podcast? Didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. Yeah, and we yeah, had we all those ideas about like speak to people and focus groups and yeah. whatever. And it's, the other thing that's interesting is, Lauren, what you were saying about the trying to find your niche and then the whole journey of going through it, trying it out, trying it out, and eventually settling on something is almost the same as what you said, Willem. Yeah. You know, well, you try it out, try it out. And you read about that stuff. Yeah. Let's try it and fail and keep going. Yeah. But it's, and, and the stripping back. Yeah, the and stripping the stripping back, back and simplifying. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, last time I also didn't not, so let's go from the, let's go from the beginning and, uh, well, actually a quick update on podcasting, uh, what's been going on and like, if we could do like, keep it short, uh, on your podcast listening habits, did anything change much? Are you listening to more or less podcasts or what's going on? I've, for me, it's, um, I used to download Tim Ferriss's podcast Mm -hmm. and then put it on my phone and then listen to it. Yeah. And then. That's rubbish <laughs> because <laughs> because Stitcher is amazing. <laughs> so I just use Stitcher. Yeah, I like Stitcher as well. And it's really easy. But I haven't listened. In fact, if anything, I've listened to fewer podcasts in, as a whole. Mm-hmm. But I'm probably more focused in it. So I, I only really listen to a few episodes of Tim Ferriss now. Not as much, anywhere near as much as I used to. Okay. But accessing it through Stitcher has been the main change. Did you and did you uh, replace your podcast listening with anything else, music or anything, just out of curiosity? Not re- well. I was listening to a lot of music because I run the guitar band at school. Okay, so I was listening to those songs, but I was, lots of Gallup ones, and it go. I can see it goes in waves with me. Yeah, but I've never listened to any fiction. Okay, I've only ever listened to fiction. Cool. How about you guys? I um. I listen to far fewer Tim Ferriss show episodes than I used to, like James. I'm a lot more selective. Um, I obviously listen to Serial Season 2 when it came out. Uh, that's no change. Uh, I listen to a podcast occasionally called Ice Cream for Everyone podcast now, <laughs> <laughs> which didn't exist um, before. Like really um, listen to them as well, yeah? Like really, really listen to them, yeah. <laughs> Really get into them. I'd love to meet the guy who does them. <laughs> um, and in terms of replacing, I mean, I think when, when we last spoke, I was listening to a lot of podcasts and my, my daily routine was very different to mm. what it is now. I'm, I'm, I'm much more in action. I was very much more at the kind of preparing, learning, exploring stage for my career and my new, my new career and my new life, essentially. Um, back then. <laughs> were, it was like you were unemployed then, but self-employed now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now that I'm self-employed, essentially running two new businesses, I ha- I'm not on the heat so much and I don't listen to so many podcasts. Um, I, I have actually started listening to a few audio books. I don't know why Audible keep on sending me free credits. Um, to just download all these books, which is great. So I have downloaded some and have started to listen to some. So maybe on our on our trip this summer, we can listen to a few audio books. But maybe that's going to start replacing podcasts. But, I mean, there's always gonna there's always gonna be room for some podcasts. I'm for just sure. a lot more yeah. I'm a lot more uh, picky about what right. I listen to. Adam, yeah, my podcast listening habits have changed dramatically since uh, we all last. Ooh. I don't want to say all last met because we all last met about 12 hours ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, again, I have pretty much stopped listening to Tim Ferriss's podcast. Um, I, I, I listen to them from time to time if there's a particularly interesting guest that I'd like to listen yeah. to the conversation with. 
and found that they started getting quite samey. Mm. Um, and although I think that Tim Ferriss is a really great interviewer, it just seemed like a lot of the, the questions were often, I mean, his standard questions are often the same, uh, and the answers often seemed the same. Um, the stories were interesting, but not interesting enough to keep me coming back episode after episode after episode forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, if you can find time to meditate for 10 to 30 minutes, you're a winner. Um, that seems to be the override. <laughs> <laughs> and eat well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Eat well and meditate for a short amount of time each day. And maybe uh, hang. <laughs> um, so I think at the time I was listening to a lot of stuff about uh, nutrition yeah. and ketosis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, although I'm still listening to little bits on that, I'm not listening to it quite so much. One of the things that um, promotes or prompts me to go looking for information in that kind of area is when somebody asks me a question that I can't answer. Mm. If I don't, like when someone, when I sit down for a meal with someone and goes, why are you eating so much butter? Um, I'll have that conversation with them and <laughs> ask me a question I don't know the answer to at this point. I'll go out looking for new information. But for the most part at this point, I've got the answers and I'm not like pushing forward with learning yeah. or going deeper into that. Yeah. And I think I'll probably come back to it at some point. I'll circle back around. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one's dropped out. One of the things that has, uh, like my interests have sort of shifted this year. Um, I think we talked about, I think we talked about Strengths Finder a little bit in the last one. If we a tiny bit, I think so. I'm not, I can't remember, but you but you can we, we can circle about it because James has mentioned it anyway. So yeah, and I know that you've written about it in a couple of your newsletters recently, and yeah. you had your interview with Jim Collison. Yeah. So we maybe don't need to spend too much time on it, but no. one of when I did that um, test. A number of years ago, one of the things that came up very, very high for me in my top five uh, was learner, mm -hmm. and uh, which is basically a love of learning. It's the process of learning rather than the content. Yeah. So it's not about getting a certain thing. It's about enjoying the journey of learning, um, which I think is one of the reasons why my interests shift from time to time. You know, I'll go through phases of sure. getting really into a subject, whether that's real estate or play how to play pool or <laughs> ketosis and nutrition or yeah. whatever. And this year, um, certainly in the last six months, I reckon it's been a little bit more um, kind of macroeconomics, uh, the movements of uh, <laughs> precious metals and how how there are all these currency wars. I read a book by uh, Jim Rickards and his new book called The New Case for Gold, which was really interesting. He wrote another book called Currency Wars and how the 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 big um, economies of the world are playing playing out wars with each other based on inflating and deflating their currency. And this has kind of gotten really interesting uh, to me and how this all works and how it all ties in with politics and and um and uh the monetary systems and especially yeah. right now with um with the presidential primaries which are, have just come to a close um and how the u.s economy and all of that affects the international economy and it's it's just become incredibly fascinating to me so i've started listening to a whole bunch of podcasts on uh precious metals golds okay uh particularly um any particular titles uh, that we should check out or, no. <laughs> yeah lauren, <laughs> lauren, lauren is making us made a sign saying i'm with geek next to me yes um, but I'm glad there's like an evolution on the super geeky yeah. subject that you're into now that has nothing to do with the one that you were into last time. Yeah. Uh, and then also recently, and this isn't podcasting. And it was a uh, very elaborate way through the strengths finders, a very scientific and elaborate exactly. way to explain how super geeky you are. Um, like massively. <laughs> I try and hide it well, but as soon as I start talking to someone, it just like, it is like having it written on my t-shirt or possibly on my forehead. Um, In gold. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's one thing. I've also started listening to a lot of YouTube videos. Um, 
or, or watching YouTube videos on uh, on those areas as well. Okay. There's one called Two Pay TV. No, no. Lauren likes to call one Two Pay TV, but it's a guy called Mike Maloney, um, who's a, a precious metals specialist and has a Two Pay. Lauren thinks he has a toupee. I, I'm unsure at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add the link. You guys, the people listening can go and check it out. Um, so fascinating listening to how the learning has changed out of it. It's yeah. so funny. And, then, and recently, um, I've also started getting into um, Forex and foreign exchange, although that hasn't influenced my podcasting habits, but it's kind of fallen out of this... this uh, evolution of interest cool all right uh, the hero's journey definitely yeah. a hero's and then, journey isn't it <laughs> and, then, and then the one the one big change in my podcasting listening habits aside from all of this is there is a new podcast that's about i don't know 10 episodes in or something mm-hmm. which is the west wing weekly and oh yeah I, you told me about it i haven't checked it this? out yet the what west is wing, this i haven't heard of it you told me uh, it's brilliant it's about 10 episodes in um Joshua Molina, who was one of the actors in The West Wing, um, uh, I forget his character's name off the top of my head, um, but uh, he started up a podcast with another guy, breaking down each episode one by one, um, oh my God. Going, going, you know, critiquing it, going in <laughs> behind the scenes, getting in the various actors uh, or directors or uh, costume designers to talk about it. You know, so they had one early episode which was um all centered around the state dinner and they won an emmy for it i think and they had the costume designer because it was the costume emmy that they won and it's it's really great joshua (laughs) he's also incredibly geeky um and it's really brilliant The, the last episode i listened to was the one with richard schiff who plays toby um and it was incredibly moving um they were uh what was the name of the episode i want to say in excelsis deo um and uh, it was incredibly, incredibly moving uh, listening to Richard Schiff talk about his character and dealing with the themes of that show, which one of the big themes of that episode was was death um, and the, I think it's the Korean War. Uh, yeah, it was just incredibly, incredibly moving. Um, so that's that's uh, become high on my hit list. Like a new episode comes out, boom, I'm right in there with that. Cool. I have to check it out. Got one episode that I've not listened to currently, which uh, will probably happen in the next day or two. But I made sure that I listened to some of the Ice Cream for Everyone podcast this week. Yes, which uh, uh, which we're going to talk about yeah. very very soon. Uh, right. I've been listening to a lot of different podcasts and even like categorizing them and organizing my different playlists in Stitcher. Um, oh, no. But I don't really follow any one of them. Oh, there's a couple I follow kind of religiously almost all the time, but a lot of the others I just sample. I take one episode here and there. Can I ask about Stitcher? Because I don't, I tried using Stitcher for about a week yeah. and I found it kind of confusing. But really? Because you two are both saying it's yeah. really great and you really use it. Can you just like tell me why is it so great and should I go Where? back to using it? It's because yeah. we're Android. Oh, I no, see. that's not the only reason. It? It's, 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 you can get Stitcher on, uh, on an iPhone as well. There's nothing to do with it. But this is what I this is what I enjoy about the app. What I, I just, really like about the app. Sorry, what? Yeah, I didn't get it. I I did, just didn't get Stitcher. So yeah, why sure. is it great? Well, the reason I enjoy the app is uh, there's one feature that I particularly like called uh, Listen Later. So you can. So I have yeah, different yeah, yeah. things. So one is I have all my my stations with like my different shows organized in different playlists, which you can probably do with the iPhone podcast, but I don't know for sure because I don't have an iPhone. Uh, yeah, so can. I have I have it split between favorites. Uh, then I have a category called fiction and comedy that are bunched up together. I got another one about gaming, another one that's all like interviews, my newest uh, marketing and branding, and then my newest one, which is sex, love and relationships. Uh, with like one of my fast, fast becoming favorite podcasts called The Heart that I really, really like. Um, so, so, so you can, you can set your phone to download every single episode of every, sing, every single thing you're following, which I do not do. What I have is I organize my shows in all these different categories. And then, uh, there's another tab that's called Listen Later. And I look at all the different shows and different episodes and I pick and choose, uh, Listen Later and Listen Later downloads them to my phone. And that makes I that I so I have my own personalized playlist of different shows and different episodes. That's what I particularly enjoy. And 
I don't have to subscribe to a show to listen to one episode later. I can look up and browse any shows, pick one episode, add it to my listen later list. It's downloaded to my phone, so I, I, I don't have to, I don't need connectivity. I can just do it offline. And, uh, and I can sample and test a couple of shows. And that's what I do regularly. Like yesterday, uh, on the way back, I was listening to this podcast called Nocturne, which is like all about amateur astronomy. And they were talking about the stars. It was a bit random, but it was really interesting. Um, so that's what, that's what I like about Stitcher. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure that I can do all of that same stuff with the, the native podcast app on an iPhone. And maybe but, you can. So, but again, I said I don't have an iPhone, so it doesn't really. Yeah. <laughs> James, how about I don't you? think, but I don't think there's a native podcast app for Android. Uh, no, there um, isn't. So, so you like, need a podcast app. Yeah. So okay. and I don't. So I don't use iTunes. And I was I tried a couple of podcast apps, which I can't even remember what they were. But uh, Stitcher was the one I stuck with. That was the only reason, and it. Because it was easy to use, and it's and not like, perfect as an application. But I also like that it's it's combined with the web application as well. So I can go on the website. I can. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I can. If you if you stop listening to an episode in the middle, and like sometimes I do that, and then you go onto the web interface, it'll pick up where it left off. It also has a really nice woman's voice saying "resuming episode" <laughs> when you stop listening and it pick it's, up. That is exactly why well, that's I a reason to it. start using it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's but others. This, this, I mean, there's Podcast Republic. There's Overcast that a lot of people use that apparently is pretty good. Yeah, for now I've stuck with Stitcher. I quite, I, I quite enjoy it. So okay, maybe I'll check it out again. Yeah. I yeah. noticed that for me, I tend to listen to podcasts in the car. So in half term, when I'm not driving as much, I don't listen to as much. Yeah, I can't listen to. I can't just sit and listen to podcasts. Yeah, I'm always doing something else. Sure. All right, uh, let's let's make a move on and talk about the show because ultimately that well talk about my show because you know this is what it's about. <laughs> and all let's about go you. from the beginning, all and I'd like you. to do one thing, which is this, which I did not have at our previous conversation. All right. All right, so now I have an intro music. What do you think of the intro music of the Ice Cream for Everyone podcast? It's got nothing to do with I'm, the kind of music we discussed in our conversation. So we were talking about something suave, electro, jazzy, something. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. You know, I found myself humming the tune randomly in my day. Did you? Do you believe it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, what, what am I, what is that? Oh, it's the theme to Ice Cream for Everyone. And I associate it with ice cream for everyone and your voice. Villain. It's quite ice creamy. Yeah, it is that's ice what creamy, I thought. isn't it? I've been, I was it looking is. for a lot of different things. And uh, through uh, a website sample, a website um, called Audio Jungle, where you can just buy, buy music or for broadcasting and have the broadcasting rights. So everything's in order, right? Um, and, and I kind of liked it. I just like it put a smile on my face. I thought it was like it's a, it's a silly tune that sticks. Uh, yeah, it does. And, uh, and it, and it, you know, has a happy vibe. So I kind of liked it. And it does have a bit of an ice cream truck kind of thing going on as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's great. Excellent. So, uh, so I get like thumbs up on the music. Thumbs up on the music. Thumbs Excellent. up on the music. Yeah. I suppose you could I, have used today with the Smashing Pumpkins, but that wouldn't have worked. That, that probably would be a little bit more expensive from a rights perspective. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> to do well, that right. While we're on this subject. Yeah. Um, I know that you and I had some conversations about the music, and there was actually an ice cream song that you found that you were interested in. Yes, um, I, I remember really who am. did it or whatever. But did anything ever? No, um, it's it's uh, that, so. I that you emailed somebody. No, I'll, I'll add the link to the ice cream song. Um, it was a so it's Brett and Brett. I can't remember the names right now. Brett and Link. Brett and Link. Brett and Link. I think so. It's it's a YouTube comedy duo. Uh, that occasionally one of their series is like, well, let's improvise a song. And they had, they had another guest on and they just decided to improvise and create lyrics for what's called the brain freeze ice cream song. 
And, uh, and it was funny lyrics and it was quite cool. So I emailed them, but I never heard back. Um, yeah. So I never heard back from them. Uh, they they're, they're like, they, they've got millions and millions of subscribers. They're like one of the really big YouTube channels. So I wouldn't be surprised if like requests like that get lost in email somewhere. So uh, yeah, I tweeted at them. I sent them, I commented on their Facebook page. I sent them an email, didn't hear anything back. So, so, and then I thought, okay, I'll just going to, I'm just going to buy the rights of, of a simple tune that I can use as a, as, as an intro audio. So, so that was it. Um, next question on the intro. So I, I obviously started the, uh, the, the episode directly with the intro in line. And I was thinking about a lot of the other interview based podcasts. So I listened to, uh, a lot of different interview based podcasts. So particularly WTF with Mark Marin, some of Tim Ferriss, uh, here's the thing with Alec Baldwin from time to time. How to be amazing with uh, this is the the neighbor drilling the thing that I feared <laughs> the thing that I feared like the neighbor is drilling oh my god is it how badly can you hear it it's in the background it's definitely it's in the there background. in the background but yeah. it right. doesn't There's interfere with being able to hear you drilling in the background okay that's how it is that's what happens when you're doing an amateur podcast from your house. <laughs> 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 Welcome to real life, everyone. Uh, so the, the also the Brett Easton Ellis show that I've uh, tried. So all of them have very different kinds of intros. For example, what's the Brett Easton Ellis show? Uh, it's Brett Easton Ellis interviews people. Amazing. Yeah, I didn't I, know about this. I've only listened to a couple. I've actually I didn't really get into it. So so to explain, so Tim Ferriss typically introduces his guests, does a lot, does a lot of advertising. That's about it. Mark Maron does really like quite long intros, really stream of consciousness. He talks about whatever's going on with him. Like, you know, if he's not feeling well, if he's feeling blue, he'll talk about it. And he's really, really open. Brady Stanellis does really long intros that are very thought through, that are probably written. Uh, and they can be 10 minutes long. And if you feel like he's reading something he wrote, and then you don't even know that the guest is there. And then suddenly he just moves on to the guest and the guest was there all along. And it's quite monotone. Uh, and it's, it's like heavy. It's like quite, you have to really pay attention because he, it's it's interesting, but it's uh it's quite kind of heavy. I like him as a writer. I read one of his books this year. Yeah, he's an amazing writer. Yeah. He's one of my favorite writers. But yeah, I didn't really like his, con- his. I don't really like his uh his show. I, I'm not, I, well, I didn't really get into it. I've only listened to two or three episodes. Um, the I could be wrong. That was my feeling was that he was very dictating the conversation at, at a lot of like for the majority of the conversation. Um, and talking a lot for himself and putting his opinions in the space like, uh, and, and then letting the person react, which is a style. So he's heavily like into the show more than the guest, if that makes sense. That's actually, I'd just like to pick up on a point there, actually, because my listening of podcasts has really changed having gone through my coach training. Right. Obviously, when you're coaching someone, it's all about really asking open-ended questions and not having any agenda and not assuming anything that mm-hmm. your client is about to say. And I really have become incredibly sensitive to in, when I'm listening to interview podcasts, when the interviewer is, uh, is really trying to elicit a specific answer out of the interviewee. Yeah. And he, they don't always get it right. Yeah. Um, and I become, it's, it's, it's slightly frustrating to yeah. listen to almost yeah, yeah absolutely and, and, I, and i've done that as well so anyway the, the long of it so the short of it so it was a bit of a long-winded way to ask the question but my question was i do these intros so far it seems like i'm quite happily settled on a five to seven in minute intro updating a little bit with what's going on with me before i introduce my guests and now i'm wondering like you know listening to all these different kinds of things i'm wondering what your opinion is on how open is it worth being on that kind of intro and i'm wondering you know because on one end my natural tendency is to be positive and that's the kind of music intro that I have and that's the kind of image that you or I or most people want to be projecting online and, and publicly right uh you know or but sometimes I'm not feeling that way so I'm wondering uh, is it okay and do I want to show like if I'm feeling blue do I want to talk about it do I, how open do I want to be on these intros and I was wondering do you have an opinion about that for me or in general and generally like the kind of image that you project online or publicly Hmm. That's a really interesting question for me, um, especially given the kind of work that I've started to do as well over the last six or eight months. Um, you know, I think in terms of putting yourself out there as, uh, as a personality, 
I, I tend to favor being honest and saying what's really going on for you and being human. Um, there's a lot of, there was a, a real trend, obviously, and I think it's still very much out there to just project this perfect image of yourself out there. Um, which almost encourages your, your listeners, your, your viewers, your readers to, um, put you up very much on a pedestal. Um, and when you do have a personal breakdown or something does go wrong, then it's even more difficult for you to sustain that perfect image when you're going about your, you know, you are, you are going about your work. Um, I mean, I think that vulnerability and, and being open about what's going on for you actually, is the key to co- really connecting on a human level with your audience. Mm-hmm. So for me, I would very much um, favor the approach of just, you know, say it how it is, obviously responsibly. Um, and, and it's interesting that you say, oh, you know, my music's very upbeat because I <laughs> I was just imagining the music in my head and then you just coming in and instead of going, hey, welcome to the Ice Cream for Everyone podcast, you're like, Hey everyone! <laughs> I feel like you like Yeah. Mate, which yeah. Hi poo. <laughs> yeah, which I can be like. By the way, we know that, and you know me. We know that. <laughs> but it, but it does. Um, it it does kind of put a smile on my face. It does. It does. Music and your upbeat introduction. You don't have to bring. Um, you don't have to kind of have an aim of dragging everyone down. It's literally like, this is what's going on for me. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be an Eeyore style, yeah. I suppose. Which wouldn't um, necessarily change the way I do the, hey, this is the Ice Cream for Everyone podcast, by the way. Which also is another question. I'm, I've been wondering, like, I, I keep, because I do t- several takes of that, and I'm like, should I have some other catchphrase? Is this enough? Do I need a specific, like, slogan catchphrase? I don't know, for, like, the opening sentence? I, 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 mean, like- I, I didn't. I don't um, think so. But James, I like it the way it is. Okay. Um, and it reminds me of, I, I agree with what Lauren says, being real. People get it. Yeah. People know it. And I, the metaphor that I immediately think of is I'm naturally quite upbeat and energetic and like that. I'm that kind of person. As a teacher, I've tried and experimented with teaching in a very straightforward, serious way. And it, bombs horribly right it sucks <laughs> so badly yes partly because i'm not enjoying myself but also because the class are like what are you doing and it's like what's going on and i've, I, I've experimented with lots of different things mm. and what i found is that when a teacher who's naturally serious tries and be fun tries to be funny it's just like go away yeah i don't want to talk to you or and you see i've seen it in class i've seen teachers think oh you have to teach like that because that's how the best teachers are no the best teachers teach in a way that's them. Mm. And I'm approaching 15 years in, as a teacher. And I think that's, I think that's how your podcast should be. Yeah. This is who I am. This is how I present. Hey, it's the ice cream for everyone podcast. The way you do it is great. Cool. And the other thing I think is what's going on in your life will naturally lead to who you have on the podcast. I was actually, that was going to be my next question, because sometimes what's going on when I record the intro is completely different from the guest, actually. We seem to be one step ahead of you all the way. We're leading into your next question every time. Yeah, which is fantastic, which is good, because, like, uh, I'm (laughs) conscious of time, and I'm not sure, like, we've been just, yeah, just conscious of time to to move on. Yeah, it's good. Um, Great. What about Adam? Do you think it? Uh, I don't think I've got anything to add. I think the same. Um, There there are... I obviously I haven't listened to all of your podcasts. But no, but let's ones, move on like, to which ones you've listened to, and like let's go there. Actually, let's go to like right. what kind of what, what have you listened to? What have you what do you think about what you listen to? Okay, first up, I didn't listen to the one with us. Yeah, um, which we've <laughs> already stated that none of us. Yeah. Have okay. <laughs> uh, I listened to your conversation with um, your brother. Yeah, that was one of the early ones. Yeah, it was, which I found really interesting. Yeah. Um, I thought that was that was a great conversation. I listened to your conversation with Kwame Ferreira. Ferreira, yeah, yeah, Ferreira. Um, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, it was cool, right? Yeah, very, very cool. And then I listened this week to your one with Jim Collison. Mm. 
which again I thought was really great. Um, and I think there was another one that I listened to that slips my mind at the moment. Okay. And uh, how about you I guys? Tried, yeah, I tried sorry. to make sure that I'd listened to like early ones and recent ones uh, to make sure that I kind of seen something of the evolution. Yeah, yeah, which is which is where I was going with this. And and just so everybody knows who's listening to this, that's what I asked all of you was to, you know, if you haven't to listen to a sample from the early, middle, and later ones. So now I've published. Uh, by the time this is going to be out, it's going to be more than thirty episodes uh, to this season. And actually, by the way, I'm like now it's it's new, but I'm seriously considering going to the podcast movement conference in Chicago. And actually, there's a good deal of chance that if I'm there, this episode will be published at the moment. I would be over there during the conference. Uh, <laughs> in, in which case, the funny thing is I was thinking of wrapping up a season and then starting another one in a few months. But if I go to Chicago and I meet a lot of people, there's a good it's entirely possible we wrap this season and then I start another one very soon. I don't know. I have no idea. We'll see. When is that conference? In 6th July? 6th to the 8th of July. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people there. Like Alice Bloomberg's going to be there. A lot of the people from Gimlet Media are going to be there. Kevin Smith is going to be there. Uh, like there's a, a, lot, a lot of huge names in, in podcasting are going to be around. It's like, it's the biggest podcast conference uh, there is. Sounds great. Yeah. I think there would be a lot to learn, which would be very interesting. And a, a lot of people maybe, to meet. Maybe you could do a special, like, in between season episode. Well, I was already thinking of that because there's a couple of special guests I'm talking to that would be like summer specials. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Plus, there's a lot of people I want to meet in Chicago. I mean, NPR is in Chicago. There's multiple, ga- there's different games. Com- the Cards Against Humanity guys are in Chicago. Uh, there's a lot of design <laughs> studios that are in Chicago that I'm really interested in. I have a couple of extremely like, really good friends in Chicago that I'd be up for interviewing as well. So anyhow, sorry, like we're just changing topic, but like, yeah, right. So which episodes have you listened to? What have you found? Um, any comments that you have feedback on, you know, either evolution from early episodes to now or anything to do, like whatever you found and whatever you, your comments or notes were. I found that, um, so I've listened to, uh, again, the one with Bjorn, your brother and Omar was on that as well. Mm-hmm. Was it not? Yeah, it was Bjorn and Omar. And, um, I listened to a cut and I forget the, the names of your guests. Um, but I listened out of curiosity to some of the, the gaming ones, yeah. which I thought I'm not going to be interested in at all. Yeah. And I don't know anything about, you know, I'm not into any of this stuff of role playing games, but I listened to them and I learned something new and it was, in- I mean, comic books seem to fit to, to, um, play a, like a big role yeah. in the, in the evolution of people's interests. Right. Particularly and for- again. Yeah, American ne- people. Yes, yeah. And again, it was never something that I was particularly interested um, in. So it was just, in- it, it was great to to listen to a different new conversation that I wouldn't normally have listened to. Mm. Um, so those were the, and I think that I, I love your interview style because you could, your passion for that topic came across so much as well. Mm. Um, and then, then I listened to the Jim, Co- is it Collison? Yeah, Jim Collison. Um, one which was ob- obviously, I mean, I don't think I know not as much about Strengths Finder and Gallup as you three do, but um, obviously I've done the test. Um, I've taken the Strengths Finder assessment, so um, that was interesting. I, the latest one I listened to was with James Watley, hmm. um, again, who's a friend of yours. So the conversation was flowing really well. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I there was a little bit of an evolution, maybe as you kind of settled into your flow and started finding your style uh but generally like a great a great mix of different people um cool. and again like you know like the tim ferris show i wouldn't listen to all i wouldn't necessarily listen to all the podcasts no which I'm is not fine i don't even listen to every episode of the yeah. ones i listen to that i follow yeah. just like tim ferris i don't listen to everything he does uh, but i'm glad that you enjoyed the gaming one because that's part of my intention is if part of the intention is of course it's going to be primarily interesting for people that are into gaming that's what they'll be turning towards but my intention for every single one of the conversations is that is it it is it would be interesting for anybody tuning in and anybody trying it. James, you told me you also enjoyed the uh, the one of the gaming ones, the conversation with John Wick, right? Oh uh, yeah. Or I don't uh, know if that's, that's what I wanted I, to talk about, but yeah, I, I a few things. Yeah, I listened to the John Wick one, um, and I'm a fan of the film. I thought the film was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it, the thing that struck me a bit like Lauren, I wasn't expecting to be interested in it, and then. At my school, we run the Model United Nations, and it's been a really great success. And John Wick talks about yeah. 
Well, the United Nations is a role playing game. And that, oh, that was just brilliant. Oh, God, it really is. And then I started thinking about that's such a great way of learning. Mm. So it was, it was interesting hearing that whole world. And some of the boys I teach over the years assume that I'm into tabletop role playing games. Uh-huh. I don't know why. They just, because <laughs> I'm so geeky, they just assume it. And for awesome. about, I've, no, not really. I've never played, not really. There's a whole world I don't really know about it. But for about four years, as this generation of kids went through the school, it was like, oh, Mr. Matuza plays Warhammer all the time. So, but I listened to that one. I listened to Jim Collison, which was really cool. And the thing that struck me on that one was his voice sounds really good on, on the, yeah. on the podcast. He sounded yeah. really good. Well, he's, he's been looked, podcasting for years and years, for right? Years. He knows. Yeah. He knows, he knows his he stuff. Did. And, um, I listened to James Watley as well. Well, yeah. I'm very nearly finished listening to that. And I can see the difference. The, you're, you're more at home. You're, it's much more interactive, I think. And the, something is beginning to hone itself in terms of an audience and what you're interested in. Mm-hmm. The audience, the one thing I think is really important. And I, the other thing is, brands I, I, maybe your intro to tie in with what you're dealing with what you've noticed with brands because when you were speaking to james watley that was a it made me nostalgic for what i did before i was a teacher mm. listening to the world of agencies and brands and the creative process and which you were working in media planning right yeah i was just in data planning yeah. before it was so so about the roi yeah like, and everything was trackable just as it was kicking off there was no smartphones though, but it's, um, that it was like James Watley's hero's journey mm. we were listening to. It, yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. And, um, the question I asked you before that, that is, that I mentioned before to you separately was, do you think there's a gamer community profile? Do you think there, there's a, what, do you think there's a particular kind of person who's a gamer? Like what other jobs and interests and, Honestly, it's difficult to say because uh, there's There's such a range. It's well, you know, if particularly if you include video gaming, there's gamers now like of several generations. Many of them our age now who who have kids, and there's billions of them. The reason I ask that is because count the people that play Candy Crush, and there's even more. (laughs) That's true. But the reason I asked that was like the um, the gaming community, the gamers, the tabletop gamers, or whatever, Mm -hmm. would be your way into a much wider audience, maybe. Yeah, and, and uh, that because you're you're speaking about what you're really into, and yeah. it comes across. Yeah, 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 absolutely, and it's and it's it's probably the case, and maybe it is the gateway to a much larger audience. Uh, and there's a lot of people interested in tabletop games that are interested in other things, and it actually ties into one of my questions considerations for where the show is going, I guess, because I kind of made it that I'm alternating between people that are kind of more around my job, or at least that's the way I talk mm. about it, and more around gaming. But the truth is, is a little bit more nebulous than that, right? Uh, and yeah. really, ultimately, uh, like a lot of other interviewers, uh, or Tim Ferriss, for example, uh, of the very famous that we mention on a regular basis, I think I'd like to have the show evolve in, so that I go talk to more people just because I'm interested in talking to them. But I'm wondering, like, should I keep this kind of focus on gaming and or marketing and advertising or you know how fast can i evolve from that um i think i don't know actually i really admire and love your consistency and i i can see that and it ties in with your newsletter mm. so there's other two points i want to make one mm. is the the consistency i think will answer that question mm. as you put out more it will it will just hone itself yeah and then Another thing to throw into the mix might be, have you thought about how you could integrate your newsletter and your podcast? I'm not saying you should have the same content. No, no, I've, like I've, I've only Watley just... James talked, talked yeah. about that meat-eating thing with the lion and tying it all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of integrated thing. Yeah. Um, I, I have a little bit, particularly that... Well, I, at least I've been... I, I only started giving it some thought. Um and I don't know, part of the reason being that I don't know how long or how or if I'll be able to maintain that kind of consistency with both writing a long-form newsletter and publishing a podcast every single week. Um, or whether I, I should, I should <laughs> slow down on one or the other, change one format so that it takes me less time. 
Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure just yet. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure. So, so we'll see. I think it would be, moves. I think definitely space to integrate the two yeah. in like the ice cream sundae yeah. is re- I look forward to that. Yeah. But, um, if it weaves together with the podcast, I think I'd listen to more podcasts with the, the ice cream sundae. It's an interesting way to look at it. Uh, at, at first I was just thinking of the ice cream sundae would be more talking about myself and then, you know, and so based on some of your advice and previous conversations, I've been weaving in more marketing, branding information or relating some marketing and branding information, which I think is very valuable because it is my job after all. And, uh, commenting on that is important. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure how it would do more to integrate it. So maybe writing about the guest, but then it depends which. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll just take it in stride and give it some thought. So think about this, it, yeah. this week, or I guess this week as we're recording it at least, yeah. um, you had your interview with Jim Collison published and your newsletter was about, uh, one of your strengths as yeah. per the Gallup Strengths Finder. Yeah. And I found that re- really interesting how they tied together. Right. Um, I also find it really interesting when you tie together aspects of your life and the stories that you're telling with branding and marketing. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Find, I, I almost find them more interesting than when you're just telling a personal story in your newsletter. Yeah. Um, well, there's more depth, you know, there is, there, there's more depth and, and maybe more relevance. Mm. And yeah. I don't really know who your audience is at the moment. Yeah. Well, but <laughs> I imagine that if you do keep this same theme of branding and marketing, your audience is going to be relating to branding and marketing in some way. Yeah. And the, I think you'll lose the relevance if it's not tied together mm. with either the podcast or your life yeah. or, you know, I think, the th- all three things need to tie yeah, together. Right. And actually, well, there's something, something certainly that's very useful and interesting in that. And I, you know, it's, it sounds so obvious now that we're saying it that I can't believe I haven't done more of it before. But, <laughs> but is that I'm always looking for what the topic of my next newsletter is going to be. And if I have already know who my guest is and what the conversation is that we had together, then it already gives me a clue. So. Yeah. And yeah. you can see what ideas it will come up with because I'm sure it would stimulate some, something to write about. Yeah. Definitely. It doesn't have to be. I like the idea of it not being directly, yeah. obviously about like just something that's yeah. so people almost draw the links themselves. Yeah. Something else to change the topic a little bit. Um, that's been really interesting in the progress of, of doing the podcast has been this kind of interesting, and we've talked about this a little bit a few months ago, but this kind of really weird and interesting way in which I kind of know that the way I am normally works with people and I have really enjoyable conversations. But sometimes I lose it when I'm looking for how should I be and what questions should I be asking. Uh, midway through, there was a moment I realized, because I can do that, and it's it's part of the things that made me kind of good at my job, I can get lost down the rabbit hole of research and start researching my guests like extensively and spending hours and hours and hours, way too long. And then <laughs> and then putting trying to put, think about really, really uh, smart questions that then I ask, and then I, but I'm assuming too much. And I ask the questions and I actually realize it breaks down. The person doesn't understand what I'm talking about. And then I have to explain my references. And, uh, and I realized at some point it wasn't working. So the last few episodes, I did something. I was like, I'm changing this. Now I'm only allowing myself an hour of re- of preparation for each guest. Um, wow. so that's, that's been good. an interesting one. So I, I don't know how that will evolve, but it's been an interesting kind of research into, uh, while progressing and actually what I said also is another one on training that I'm, I was trying, I'm trying to watch myself with my ears and arms. Um, <laughs> it again. I, I do it too. I do it too. I, maybe he's a teacher, but it, I do it as well. I it's talked just, to, I had a conversation with some one person who, who used to uh, work in radio and she told me that, you know, the training is you have to go silent, make pauses. <laughs> and like little by little, that's why like every time you, um, just, just, just go stop, just silent. Most of the time it's just automatic. So I'm still trainee amateur audio person. <laughs> I suppose you can keep talking. That's the other way to deal with it. And you can also keep talking, but at some point I have to think about what I'm going to say next. So any other comments uh, or, or is that it? And then we can move to the last, the last questions. The uh, I got one, questions. one other comment. One thing yeah. that I've noticed is uh, that you, or there's not, there's not a, one thing I've noticed is that you say something and then sometimes backtrack. 
Mm. And it's it's almost like you contradict yourself a little bit. For example? I can't think of what you were saying, but it was in your introduction to the Jim Collison interview uh-huh. that I listened to this week. That's yeah. where I noticed it. And it was quite interesting because you said that you'd recorded the introduction several times. But it was like, blah, 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 blah. Well, actually, it's not quite like that. It's like, da, 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 da. Yeah. I think, uh, and I think that's just, I think that's just, you know, part of your personality is that's because I do that. Well, don't I do that with your conversations? Because I like start saying something and then, and then as I'm saying it, (laughs) question what I'm saying and backtrack and say, well, wait a second, actually. (laughs) Yeah. So it's not like there's anything wrong with it. It's just something that I've noticed and I don't notice it so much in conversation, but I notice it in, in the podcast. Right. I notice it because it's like, it's a one way thing that I'm just, um, absorbing with the information and it's mm-hmm. not, we don't have the back and forth in the conversation. Yeah. And it's the, the back and forth happens almost on your own. Right. <laughs> it's like, the, the, well, yes, I do have that. <laughs> I have conversations with myself. I've loved you for it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and actually, like, as I'm talking, then I'm thinking about what I'm saying and probably thinking about two other things at the same time. There's too many ideas in your head. Oh, wait, that's. <laughs> <laughs> something else yeah. um so uh, i've got two i've got two more things yes 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 please do um number one and i'm relating it using my experience as a teacher i found that when i'm in class and i'm asking questions if i say something like do you think the difference between revenue and profit is this or do you think it's this and maybe it could be that that doesn't get as good a response as do you think the revenue, the difference between revenue and cost is this, or revenue and profit is this? And then they just say whatever they say. And sometimes what I've noticed when you're asking a question, a bit like what Adam said about the ideas in your head, you'll ask a question and then you'll think you've answered the question you've asked or what they might say. And you say that and then you say all this and then they want to say something. Mm. And it's over the years, I have to get myself to shut up when I'm asking kids questions and it's hard. I actually find myself biting my finger because it doesn't help their learning. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard some of that in your, your, when you were in interviewing. Yeah. Got that it. was one thing. And then the other thing is, and I've mentioned this to you before, I like the idea of rounding off with the quick fire questions. What's your favorite ice cream? And now I want to try chocolate mint ice cream because I haven't had it for years. Did, did you? So, uh, so I don't know what it is about the people I have conversations with in interview, but <laughs> the vast majority of them love mint chocolate chip. It's amazing. Yeah, but it's it's a, it's such a good way of rounding off your podcast. What's your favorite ice cream? And it, that becomes a really nice thing to leave the podcast with, or to leave as as people know the podcast is coming to an end, and yeah. it becomes a nice ice cream for everyone. Yeah, everyone's then thinking about the tune. And their favorite ice cream. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and some of the other, any other comments on the cool down questions? Um, what are this, the other regular cool down questions that you ask? I don't really have any. So I switch them around and I try to find new ones, but I want to spend a little bit more time elaborating them. The, the main idea I had in mind was, well, one ice cream question or, or two. So sometimes I, so that I've been experimenting with different ice cream questions, which sometimes people who have some amazing story to tell and sometimes they bomb and I'm like, all right, well, I, I, and I don't know one how to find a solution. Huh? One scoop or two. One scoop or two. Just who, what did, did I ask Jim Collison the question? Uh, I think like, what, what do you think there's, what kind of innovation is coming to the world of ice cream making or something like that? Uh, I don't remember. But that's uh, quite cool. Uh, I've, another I've, one was like, you know, what, what's your favorite food that deserves to be made into an ice cream? Oh, that's a good one as well, I think. Yeah, which occasionally is a, I, I bring it back. And then the other question or the, the idea of the other cool down questions is to correlate different interests. So if I'm interviewing somebody in gaming, I'll ask them about marketing, advertising, or branding, like what your favorite brand is or do what's a memorable ad. If it's somebody who works in advertising, I'll ask them about gaming. Um, now it's always the same. It's like sometimes I have some great stories. Some other times, you know, I might have a fantastic conversation with someone like Heidi Hackamer, which she's a brand strategist in New York. We had an amazing conversation. And at the end, I was like, you know, how about games? And she was like, no, I just uh, 
don't play games. <laughs> and the, she didn't say it like that. She always felt embarrassed. And most people feel embarrassed if they say no to me. And I'm like, oh, well, so I'm asking questions that, and I don't know if there's a way to alleviate that or if there's a way to, there may well be a way to do that better. Uh, yeah, there is. Candy Crush. That's your way in. <laughs> no, to Everyone ask has a, an to, candy crush. A, a better way to ask those kinds of questions or a better way to ask a question so that there's more mitigating ways to answer than just, oh, yes, I have an amazing story or no, I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe it's something a bit more like... How does gaming or play impact your work or? Yeah, that's not about, that's actually an interesting question. I'll look at that one. And then they go, it doesn't. <laughs> and they might go, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, no. they might, they might, absolutely. Something's pretty wrong with but it, it, but it does, you know. That's the risk of being an interview, isn't it? But, yeah. Because I, it's, it's different from those kinds of questions of, well, the Tim Ferriss, like at the end, some of them are pretty good. Some of them are, well, they're always the same. But it's always interesting to ask, you know, what's your favorite book or the book that you gifted the most or those kinds of questions. But so there's always something to say, or most guests would have something to say to that. But then I like switching them around. So I have a collection of different questions. I need to work on some new ones. I, um, think there's, I can't remember what any of them are off the top of my head. This isn't something that I love massively, but mm -hmm. there is, um, there's a TV show that my dad loves, which yeah. is Inside the Actor's Studio. Yes, yeah, great TV show. Yeah. And, and the, the name of the, uh, interviewer slipped my mind right now, but he always asked the same question. They got about 10 questions for their interviews that are really great. So you could, check out what they are and, and maybe draw from them a little bit. Yeah, I'll check that they out. They are questions that always seem to elicit good stories from the yeah. uh, actors that he's interviewing. Yeah. Um, and any other thoughts, comments on like either rhythm, length of the episodes or not particularly? I mean, you're averaging about an hour an episode or so. I typically average an hour. Sometimes it goes over. This one's going to be longer. Um, I kind of like an hour. I, I got nothing against the really long ones. There are plenty of really long yeah. podcasts that I listen to, you know, like those five part, four hour each yeah. episodes of Hardcore Which Histories. I, I still haven't gotten into. <laughs> I, I'm very happy with the length as well. I, I'm, it's the kind of length I like. It works for me. I find I have good conversations. I, man, I imagine to get to know someone in an, like it 15 probably minutes works to an pretty hour. Well, it probably works pretty well with people's schedule as well to yeah. block out an hour long conversation or a 90 minute conversation. Exactly. No, it's going to be tough to have people block out a half day for a podcast recording. Yeah, and I don't think I want to do it that long anyway. It's just, uh, yeah. and, and I listen to a lot of hour long podcasts and it works for me. Sometimes it's a little bit longer, but you know, just try to check. I like, you. I like the idea of like a half hour kind of flow, two chunks of a half hour, purely because when I get in the car, yeah. it tends to be like half an hour. And I don't know if half an hour is that kind of length, a good length of time. Well, there, there's a lot of other podcasts, including interview ones that are half an hour. So it was just a question of choice. I kind of like the long ones, which we've, we've talked a lot about that in our previous conversation. So we're not going to mm -hmm. go over it. Another question and something I've been considering and wondering about for the next season and for the evolution of the show is, you know, is there, will there be a way to make some money out of it? Uh, and you know, not probably not that I don't know about much. I don't have a gigantic audience, but it's growing. Um, so there's two main streams of revenue possible. One is advertising. So my show is nowhere near big enough, but I was, I thought I'd ask you what you thought about advertising on, on podcasts. And two is raising money through funding on, uh, for example, a website like Patreon, where it would be, I, uh, you know, I might be able to get a little bit of money out of that, even if it's just for paying for my hosting, uh, on the hosting the podcast on a monthly basis and that kind of stuff. So. I don't know if I, I'm wondering when to do that, if I'll do that. And I thought I'd ask if you had an opinion, one about like people advertising and listening to ads on podcasts or going that route versus asking for people money or not doing any of it. I can speak to the advertising point. Yeah. One of the things that came to me when you were asking about your intro was it really, it really frustrates me when, um, a really long segment of someone's intro is about the sponsors of the show. Yeah. I know that some say, Oh, the sponsor of this show is dot, dot, dot. And they tell, they say a whole story and how to get discount codes. And then they say the sponsor of the show is, and then another sponsor and it just goes on and on. Yeah. Um, and 
the what I really like um, in the advertising, which actually you're probably much more familiar with now, is um, what Alex Bloomberg's done yeah. at Gibnet Media because he's actually didn't he hire his wife specifically to develop the stories that they tell about the the sponsors yeah. that they have. Yeah. Um, I like that they come in um, in the middle rather than right at the beginning as yeah. well. I think, um, I think that's good too. I, I agree. And, and, and we I talked about that, that in the last conversation. The, uh, yeah. Those ads are really good. Yeah. Yeah. Although I think actually he's hired her and done all of that since um, our first conversation. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm getting my timings oh, muddled maybe. up. But I know, yeah. I know, I know that they, they, they'd already, he'd already started um, in his podcasts to um, have this strategy of telling a story with their um, sponsors. But I think since he's actually hired his wife in, to, to Lich, and there's a whole episode on that on the startup podcast yes. to take um to, to really build that um as a style and i think that's something that you would actually be quite good at um so it would fit in quite well um so that's what i have to say about the advertising Fantastic. question i don't have a problem with advertising but it does annoy me when it takes up huge segments like lauren said you yeah. know, especially at the beginning you know if it takes up eight yeah. minutes, just want to get into it. When I'm there to listen to a particular conversation with a particular person, I find it a bit insulting, almost as a listener. Yeah. Um, to I heard in one of the interviews with Tim Ferriss that I listened to not that long ago. His and I hate to kind of come back to him again, but you know, he's, got <laughs> one of the, he's getting a lot of like audio time in this show, isn't he? Um. But he does have one of the you know really popular podcasts out there. Yeah, he does. Uh, and one of the things that he said was he tries to be really respectful of his audience and to just top and tail. So he'll have something just at the beginning, he'll have something at the end, and and he doesn't interrupt the conversation or break it in the way that a lot of podcasts do. Like, okay, now we're going to take a break uh, and hear some words from our sponsor. Yeah. Um, and I like that because when I get to the end of the podcast, I can just stop. You know, I've heard this ad before. I don't have to spend another five minutes listening to that. You know, I like that. The beginning one, I guess, to start it that way, make sure that your sponsor gets some airtime that almost always will get listened to. But again, you know, the native podcast app on iPhone has a forward 15 seconds feature. So I can just go tick 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 and i'm fast forwarding for two minutes and i'm through it and it's not that big a deal um the the stories that uh you were mentioning that's always more interesting i'm more inclined i'm always more inclined to listen to that yeah yeah we can hear you james did we freeze no no oh you guys oh you guys froze on my computer did you finish what you said adam I, i missed that bit um, I think I have now. I hadn't <laughs> when, <laughs> <laughs> when I suddenly said hello in the middle. Of- <laughs> oh dear, technology. I I would add to this whole advertising thing. When when I listen to someone and I respect what they're saying, uh, and they recommend a product, then I'll go check it out. Yeah. I like the idea of an affiliate. If if I but then it comes back to trust in who I'm listening to. Yeah. So like even what we're saying about Stitcher. Yeah. Yeah. Adam was interested because we both talked about it. Yeah. But so it's like like that kind of natural conversation. If yeah. you recommended something. Yeah. Then I'd be like, oh, what's that? Let me go and investigate. Yeah. Or, cool. or recommending podcasts. That yeah. Would, and I think that's a that's the way it can work. Yeah. It is. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. I like that too. Sorry, Willem, I got one other thing for you. Yeah. Sure. That. Sure. Sure. Uh, I like that. I like the personal recommendations. I also like the ads more where the host will talk about their use of the product in an, uh, in what seems like an unscripted style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When it's very heavily scripted and they're just reading it and going, Oh, I use this. Go da 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 da. I find that really trite. Yes. Uh, don't like it at all. Yeah. But when it's, Hey, I'm checking this out. This is what I'm using. This is what I'm looking at that I engage with a lot more. Yeah, of uh, the other possible option is a donation based model, you know, similar to brain pickings. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I meant by uh, funding through Patreon or similar. Oh uh, okay, I'm not yeah. familiar with Patreon. Well it's it's just a it's just a website that allows to do that kind of transaction. Sorry? 
I said, I'm not familiar with Patreon, but if you recommend it, I'll go check it out. <laughs> It's a it's a platform like Kickstarter, but instead of doing it project based, you can put uh, initiatives like a podcast or a newsletter or a show or whatever it is, and you can put up a page and you can ask people to do either one time donations or give a certain amount per week or per episode published. Really, for example, yeah. Nice. Mm. So it's quite interesting, uh, and um, so I've been studying the the possibility of doing that, and 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 I do like the. Of course, the brain pickings model. I think she uses PayPal mm. actually, but she's probably big I enough so. for that. Uh, the the uh, the main question on Patreon, for example, or similar platforms, is that uh, they're based in the states. That would be coming into mm-hmm. U.S. dollars. Then I would have to convert it into British pounds because that's where I live and what my accounts are in. And uh, is the probably there would be money lost on the conversion rate, and is it worth it? I'm not sure. I know someone who's become a recent yeah. expert in that, so maybe yeah, me talk too. To him. <laughs> yeah, I'll go and have a conversation with him about it. Okay, we'll be well. Let's wrap up, and uh, this is going to be your just a couple of ones, and actually the cool down question, which is related to what we just talked about. Now, if I yeah, were to pursue a on. brand and look for a sponsor, of course, I mean I've got it in my name. What brand of ice cream should I go after? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know that I'm that familiar with so many ice cream brands. I, I know the big ones. Yeah, but that's, uh, so we know the big ones. You can go with well your opinion of the big ones if you have one, and or you can go with like for example, well let's go with whoever's got something to say first. So before I prefer Ben something. and Jerry's to Hagen Dazs. Say yeah, um, I like their flavors better i like that ice cream better and i like their brand better it's a bit more light and fun yeah and probably matches with your music better than the the hagen brand yeah which i mean that would be awesome if i <laughs> ben and jerry's sponsoring <laughs> the ice cream for everyone podcast yeah. just putting it out there <laughs> i i have to say i agree with the ben and jerry thing the um Although, because it's my fa- they do my favorite flavor of like peanut butter cups. Oh my ice god, cream. that's awesome! I've discovered that recently. Peanut butter it's with peanut butter so cups. So good, so, so good. good. Yeah, so good. That's like my favorite. But the um, they're, they're Oreos do an ice cream as well. Mm. That's actually very good. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly so. So the idea of Oreos, but I think it has to be Ben and Jerry's. Really, what else is there? Yeah. What about what about Magnum? They employ all of these models to do all of their advertising. Maybe that would be a nice, hey, nice the coffee. Brand. They, there's a coffee one that they to meet the models. Is what you mean. <laughs> I'm not sure that would go. Or, no, what, or do you mean models of ice cream? She meant models of ice cream. No, I meant models like female hot models <laughs> <laughs> who are posing with a Magnum with lips. You know, how, how do you see that playing from an audio advertising perspective? I'm not really sure. I just see like a convergence of your brand, your branding with theirs. Magnum. Yeah, That's it's it. going to have to become a video podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just for the advertiser. No, I was thinking that, that, so of course Ben and Jerry's, but I was wondering, there's a couple of ice cream brands that might be a little bit smaller, more artisan, up and coming that, you know, that might be more likely to be interested. Um, but let's see. Let, this is like. Let's see how much I grow in my audience. Who are those kind of small, yeah. up and coming so brand, ice cream some. brands? I want to go buy some now. Uh, I, so I'm thinking of a. So there's one I'm thinking of that I can't remember the name of right now, but they're a New York based, small ish brand uh, that won the uh, to get to do the packaging and promotional packaging for the release of the latest Star Wars movie. Uh, and I, it's on my list of people that I'd like to reach out to to interview, actually. And I, I, I came across this in an article online. I can't remember if it was Fast Company or something like that. Um, and I thought it was a really interesting story. And uh, it was a story of how this small brand managed to secure the rights to do co- co-branded ice cream stuff for the Star Wars movie. Um, so that that's what I mean by that. But otherwise, I don't really have anybody specific in mind. It could be like Joe's Ice Cream Parlor from down the road. I don't know. Have you had any ice cream related people on your podcast yet? No, I haven't. That's a, that's like part of the questions and evolutions for next season that I'm looking at. And I'm actually, that's another question on like looking at what kind of content do I want for next season? What kind of people do I want? 
I'd love to be able to have a bit more like authors of books I've really liked, for example, mm. um, is one thing I'm thinking about. But of course, I also have to like, contend with like who, well, who replies to me and who I can approach and mix it in with like, how do I keep promoting my show? Uh, between the kind of guests that would be attracting a certain more of an audience, uh, or mixing it with guests that are equally fascinating, but that wouldn't necessarily bring me anybody because they, nobody knows them. Uh, like, uh, but I mean, so anyway, I'm, so I'm looking at like, should I, should I be very strategic about the way that I mix that up? Or ultimately the thing that brings it down anyway is to be able to publish once a week. Then at some point you're just going to have these conversations and I don't have much time to think about it. I ask a bunch of people. A lot of people don't reply. Some people say no. So I go with the people who are up for talking anyway. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the people I contact, I'm interested in talking to. So in the first place, obviously. But uh, yeah, I'm renewing and working on all that kind of lists. I don't really have much to say on that right now anyway. So, uh, so I'm not really going to. Not really going to go much in length, but um, listen, uh, we've already went over time, so I think we should wrap up. Any last words on like completing the season finale? I think like, thank you so much for coming and joining me for this. Uh, I'm really okay. excited about growing the show. I'm excited about getting better at interviews. I'm excited by like improving my audio recording uh, equipment. That's something that's going to be coming up in the next, uh, well, very soon, because right now I've been working with the same microphone and uh, you know, and, and looking at how I can do a little bit better from the sound editing perspective. So we'll, we'll see. Mm. Um, yeah. Any last words? I'm just excited for you and seeing how it's going to grow and look forward to listening to future episodes. Cool. I'd just like to say that I think you've done a great job over this year in creating, yep. building, refining your podcast. I think it's great that we're having this conversation, top and tailing the, the season. Yeah. And it's, it's been one of the podcasts that I've really enjoyed listening to. Awesome. So, you know, well I'm going to, I'm going to reconduct the tradition of topping and tailing the, the next season, but with a different group of people. We won't right. be offended. Good. Because I'm going to see you at some other times. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> James, any last words? It's inspiring to watch how it's grown and you've inspired me and Manoscopy with talking about doing a podcast. So we'll just wait for you to make all the mistakes and then we'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. I really, really appreciate, uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Can I, can I just answer the favorite ice cream flavor question? Yeah. Yes. I want to ask that. Oh, oh yeah. Like, sorry. I thought you had it. Didn't like, we do that we last time? That the whole time. We did that last we time. We did that last time. But you did see, please that, tell, tell us again. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember doing that last time. Tell us, tell us, tell us. You seem excited about it. Cookie, if I cookie said dough. it before, I'll say it again. Cookie dough. I said cookie dough. You did say it before. It hasn't it, changed. <laughs> no, it hasn't changed in the last year. I just don't eat very much ice cream these days, but cookie dough all yes, the way. Which you also explained last time. <laughs> 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 Lauren, any, anything new on that one? Just in no, case. nothing new. Same, same answer I gave last okay. time. James, is yours still peanut butter with peanut butter cups or does it, it, it change? It is. <laughs> It is peanut butter, but there, there's a new kid in town, which is Biscoff. Ooh, what's the that? Biscoff. So there's these Belgian biscuits. Uh -huh. You can get them as biscuits, you can get it as a spread, and you can get it in an ice cream, and that's really good wow. as well. On that note, but, I'm going to say thank you and goodbye, and uh, yeah, that's about it. That's it for season Thanks, one. Thanks, Thank you, Willem.